So, hello and welcome. Seven points of posture practice. And that's what this whole video is going to be about, is about talking these seven points of posture. Now, these seven points will help you as you evolve your meditation practice. Remember, if you're a beginner, don't worry so much about this. And if you want to start and give it a go, awesome. You know, But don't think you've got to sit for 10, 15, 20 minutes like this at the start because it becomes pain management rather than meditation. And all it does is we'll get frustrated. And I'm not talking to everyone. Some of you will become, some of you are quite flexible and things like that and can, and can sit for long periods already like this. But for you others, much like me, who are just terrible <laughs> sitting like this, don't worry so much. But come back to this video and check it out and come back and use the seven points of posture. Um, so, seven points. Now we start. So the first point is the sitting and feeling sitting with the legs underneath. Now, some of you can get up into that sort of full lotus or half lotus or the Sri Lankan, whatever it's called. I'm not sure. Um, doesn't really matter anyway, in all honesty. But you sort of get your legs so they sit flat like that, so you look sort of like a triangle. Looks pretty cool, actually, when you see people sitting like that. But importantly, it's this idea of the legs, so just feeling the legs underneath you. All right? So we move up from the legs and we come up into the sit bones. Now, there's only one way that you can really feel the sit bones, and that is on rocking from side to side. And yes, we do have sit bones in there where you'd think they'd be. And the, another good way of doing it is just sort of putting your hands just underneath and just rocking from side to side. And you can feel when the sit bones are protruded. When you're bent over and hunched, our sit bones would start like this. They sort of go outwards. But if you're sat straight backed, it sort of allows you to sit properly on your sit bones, which allows you to sit for longer, in all honesty, because it takes a lot of the pressure off your lower back. It makes the meditation a bit more enjoyable. So sit legs, sit bones. Next, our hands. Now, mudra, word, used to describe many different things, but in this occasion, we're going to be using mudra as the hands. Now, a lot of people like to do their funky finger things and stuff like that. Awesome, you know, I know in Buddhist, we, the Buddhist tradition where we put our fingers in our hands if we're resting them over the front, uh, helps us to bring some focus and some intention into what our practice is. But again, ultimately, I would say do what's comfortable. You don't need to do these things. You know? I, I, again, I've never had someone say I, I held my hands in a circle like this and I awakened through it. Or well, not yet anyway, or I haven't met them. Maybe there, there are people out there, but I certainly haven't met them. So I would say it's where you get your hands most comfortable because they will begin to when you sit for longer periods, it, it will begin to hurt a little, in all honesty. But don't be scared about that. It's part of the practice, feeling into sort of these, 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 these pain thresholds. Not pushing yourself too far, but feeling into it. So I like to sit just with my hands in my lap like this. Maybe you can see. So it's just left hand under right. You know, they always say left hand under right. It's part of this sort of process of enlightenment, left under right. Um, but if you want to do right under left, awesome. But I think just because that's where I was shown right at the start, that's what I did. If you want to go the whole Zen thing and sort of resting on here and pushing your two thumbs, thumbs together. But if that's not comfortable for you, just placing your hands upwards or downwards on your lap. You know, I'll see a lot of people doing that, just comfortably sitting their hands this way. Or, you know, it's, and it's okay during your meditation to move your mudra around. You know, you can start here and move your hands on the side and move your hands over there. You know, the process of meditation is not so much about whether or not you're doing it right or wrong. It's feeling into the movement, watching how it may be quite painful here and feeling into the pain and then watching how the pain releases and watch how the mind changes as you feel more. It's sort of this relaxation process that comes after pushing up against the pain. And we sort of can move our hands, but practice. Which one works best for you? This one is what works best for me. I sit like this pretty much every time. Sometimes I sit with my fingers and whatnot over the end of my shoulders, certainly if I'm doing sort of the open-eyed stair pose. Um, but in particular, it's just sat quite comfortably on my lap. And I wear tracksuit pants and things like that just to sort of give me a little bit of extra because I've got some big old thighs. I just 
sort of allows me just to rest my hands comfortably in there. Um, I would say if you're sitting, don't wear jeans. It's incredibly uncomfortable, um, unless you've got those sort of jeans that are, are quite elasticy. Okay, so legs, sit bones, mudra, one, two, three. Next is our spine. And this is sort of the, the lifting upwards, the straight back. You know, and often sometimes when we're not on our sit bones, you know, it just affects it all. And so what we're doing is just noticing we're on our sit bones. And as we sit on our sit bones, our spine just naturally elongates. And it almost feels like our, our shoulders lift. And the straight back is, again, energetically, it does help. It helps you to breathe a little bit better and all these other types of things. But ultimately, what we're beginning to recognize is it's a lot more comfortable. You know, it is actually more comfortable sitting with a nice straight back than it is for uh, having, it not, uh, having it curved. And so just allowing for that nice straight back. You know, straighten the back out, you know, feeling into it. And a good way to sort of also do it, I like to just sort of rock from side to side and forward and back. And you can sort of feel the sit bones and you're on it and the, or the back just naturally wants to elongate. And it sort of feels like you're beginning to stretch yourself off the cushion. So legs, sit bones, mudra, back. Next one is shoulders. Now I was sort of someone, as I said, I sort of hunched a bit and I remember being told, open your shoulders up like an eagle. You know, and by that I, he meant, they mean not just, not sort of rat, <laughs> um, but more like, you know, just opening them up a little bit. Allow the lungs to breathe as the back straightens, the shoulders can open. And so we just open our shoulders up a little bit and open them up. Now, another thing I was told as well is sort of imagine you're holding a couple of eggs under your arm. So your elbows begin to point outwards. So you're sort of sitting like this. All right, so the shoulders go back, the elbows point outwards, and it gets a little bit comfortable. Yes, nice straight back, nice shoulders are back. So legs, sit bones, spine, shoulders, hands. And then he's at five, right? The next is our head. Now, by head, I mean, you know, some people they like, like I like, like sitting and looking directly outwards. A lot of people sort of drop their chin a little bit, you know, so it's sort of looking out, dropping chin, whatever it is that's your suit. Now, as you drop the chin, make sure you're not bending the neck. And a good way to do that is if, as you drop the chin, you're sort of making sure that your ears are still over your shoulders. So you're dropping the chin instead of dropping the neck, okay? So as we do it, we sort of look out, drop the chin, check that it's back. And all good. So chin drop, head's okay. And the last thing is the eyes and the tongue. Now, a lot of people, they don't feel comfortable sitting with their eyes open, but if you do, Sitting with your eyes open is, is perfectly normal. Doesn't mean you have to stare. You're just opening your eyes. Now, if, you drop, if you've dropped your chin, you're just sort of allowing the eyes to rest, you know? So just letting the eyes rest. Doesn't mean sort of trying to go all weird with your eyes. You're just letting the eyes rest. You're just looking and the eyes just begin to rest quite naturally. Now, it'll take you a bit of time. The eyes will dry out. Don't worry about blinking, you know. It's not about seeing how long you can sort of sit and make your eyes hurt. It's natural for the eyes to blink. But what you're trying to do is take your attention away from the looking and more into the other parts that are going on, the sounds, the breath, the movement. Just let the, let the seeing see. Yeah, if that makes sense. Now, if you prefer just to do it with your eyes closed, that's okay. And it's okay during practice to open and close your eyes. You know, I was often told, you know, if you're, as you're extending your time, spend a little time with your eyes open, eyes closed, looking up, looking down, looking forward. You know, vary your practice. All the good. Doesn't change meditation. Meditation stays the same. All you're doing is just working with what you're noticing, seeing, feeling, sensing, all these types of things, becoming familiarized with the movement. And as I said, the seven is sort of the eyes and the tongue and, you know, the tongue jaw type whole thing. So you're just softening 
softening your jaw. So you just sort of, the jaw softens, the tongue rests against the top of the mouth. Don't clench your teeth, very important. So as the eyes glaze, jaw softens, tongue rests comfortably, you're good to go. All right, so let's run through those quickly again. Legs, sit bones, hands, back and shoulders, head, neck, eyes, jaw, tongue. Now again, you don't have to sit with your eyes open. You can sit with them closed. And that is it, seven points of posture. These will become part of your practice. Try and bring them in. And like you watch the breath, like you're watching your thoughts, like you're watching all of these things, you can also use the body as a form of an anchor, your, pra your posture as a form of an anchor. Now, I want to know, how'd you get on? What's your thoughts? Have you done seven points of posture before? Were they different to these ones? Whatever. I'd love to hear your comments. Please also share the page, like the page, whatever you want to do. It'd be much appreciated in getting this message out to all those people that need it the most. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Um, I also have a 21-day uh, manifesting compassion course that's coming up absolutely free. Check it out. It's in the uh, comments below. Um, but have an amazing rest of your day and I hope to see you again on another video. Thanks so much.